response to the attack at Robb Elementary was an abject failure and antithetical to everything we've learned over the last two decades since the Columbine massacre. Three minutes after the subject entered the West Building, there was sufficient number of armed officers wearing body armor to isolate, distract, and neutralize the subject. The only thing stopping a hallway of dedicated officers from entering room 111 and 112 was the on-scene commander who decided to place the lives of officers before the lives of children. One error, 14 minutes and eight seconds. That's how long the children waited and the teachers waited in rooms 111 to be rescued. And while they waited, the on-scene commander waited for a radio and rifles. Then he waited for shields. Then he waited for SWAT. Lastly, he waited for a key that was never needed. <clears throat> well, guys, we got more information out on the Uval shooting. I know everybody doesn't want to really listen to this, but, uh, you know, got to do what we got to do, right? Got to stay informed on why we need to keep our guns and to uh, why all this uh, BS is uh, going around. Um, all right. So as you've seen there, that we you have actively seen that where the man in question, the guy that does the oval shooting or what have you, or what, uh, the, the police chief, has actively said, each time I try to key, I was just praying, our our dog said. Finally, 77 minutes after the massacre began, officers were able to unlock the door and finally shoot the gunman. However, we have some severe issues with this. And I, I'm going to say exactly why. First off, we all know that, now that we do know, that there was no keys involved. And there was no unable to break doors down or anything because that wasn't really the case. If you come and look at this video here, you'll see why. And I asked, but the classroom door, was it locked or not locked? The classroom door, this is the actual door, but we don't really want to use that. This is what, this is room 127 and 126. That's what, what 111, this 112 and 111 would look like in that regard. And here's the door. You cannot lock this door from the inside of the classroom. There's nothing the teacher could do to lock the door inside the classroom. The teacher can come outside the classroom as the, as the requirement is to lock the door with, with a key, only with a key, and this right here by turning it, you know, and, and, lo and the, the lock position. And I can actually have the door of, a, of another, this, is, this came from the West Building, one of the doors right here, and I can demonstrate that if you'd like at this time, Mr. Chairman. So the teacher could not even lock the classroom door from the inside? That's correct. There's no way to lock the, the door from the inside. And there's no way for the subject to lock the door from the inside. It was open. I heard reports that the, is that all fictitious or? We had, we had a locksmith inspect the lock and the strike plate. The lock was functional. The strike plate was not. What was not happening is, so as you can see on this door here, is that, yes, the lock was working as it was designed, but if it doesn't, the strike, if the through doesn't get into the strike plate, it doesn't, it's not, it may be locked, but it's not secure. You can just open it. And that's, that, that, that's, you know, so you can either, it can be the lock position, ironically, in the lock position or unlock position, and it's still unsecured and can be opened. Now, after going after through this, this specific video, why would we expect that, like, we didn't know there was there was there were keys involved, and that there was uh, no doors. Now, if we also see here that everything that we've seen so far is uh, completely insane, because he said each time I was praying uh, for for before the, the 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 massacre began, right? Okay. Well, we know that's a failure because not because there were no keys involved. The doors specifically at hand did not have uh, did not have a key. Although you had to, from the outside, from when you if you are inside, you have to open the door, lock the door, and then proceed to go back inside. So that was the first thing. And the big main door was not was not in set into locked position. So there was no big big uh, thing here of oh let's just. Oh, we had to we had struggle to get keys, or we had struggle to break a door open. No, they had they had ways to open it. They had crowbars. They had all this other stuff to break open the doors. They had these tools. So we already knew this was a well, this was already a fallacy. So.
So now he say he will go to say the only thing that was important to me at this time was to save as many teachers and children as possible. Oh really? Okay. So you want to save the most important uh, that say as many teachers and children as possible, even though that we have this timestamp here to where teacher pops open the door at 11:27 a.m. Ramos crashes truck at 11:28 a.m. Shoots at two people at funeral home. Shoots at people at 11:31 a.m. School cop drives past Ramos 11:32 a.m. Ramos enters school 11:33 a.m. Shoots 100 rounds into two classrooms. Three cops follow within another four, then another four of 35 a.m. And then at 9, 19 cops in the hallway at 12.03 p.m. Now listen, I'm not really an idiot, and, I, and sometimes I can get things wrong, right? But you're going to have to be very hard-pressed for me to not say that you were, you, that you were trying to save as many teachers and children as possible when uh, we have kids from room 112 to kids to 9-11, says multiple dead, 12, at 12.10 12, p.m. Portak SWAT arrived with shields at 12.15 p.m. Now, if you guys don't know what an actual Portak shield is, or rather a ballistic shield at all, so I'm going to inform you on exactly what that is. Now, Ballistic shields, for the most part, usually end up protecting people or the people holding them from gunfire. And this is what it does. Ballistic shields, also known as bunker shields and, ballist and ballistic blankets, are used when armed resistance is expected. They are specifically designed to stop bullets and dangerous projectiles. SWAT special operations use these personal shields if carried by hand, and mobile personal shields if they, if they come with wheels, and emergency response teams worldwide to help neutralize threats quickly. Such situations include high-risk search warrants, raids on drug houses, and active shooter, among many others. Oh, active shooter we see here. We see active shooter. Okay, so, if we're talking about active shooters here, which is, in this case, is an active shooter, do we not possibly maybe think that this is a really good time to use the ballistic shields? Because we all know, in this time frame, that... The Bordak Swalk arrived with shields at 12.15 p.m. She says multiple dead. This is at 12.10. Bordak Swalk arrived five minutes later. Room 112, kids, say, say, kids says nine students alive. Uh, and this is at 12.16, so this is a minute after. Room 111, kids says she shot the door. 12.26 p.m. Room 11, kids says please end please Send police now, 12.23 p.m. We, it says end police now. Uh, but we obviously know, we can actually translate as send. And then at breach classroom and kill gunman at 12.50. So all of this took an immense amount of time. All we do know is that between this entire time, there was cops already on the board. And there was already 100, sh 100 rounds sh into classroom shot. And... We know at a very at the very least that these shields people, these people that have these ballistic shields, which you can see in this picture here, they have ballistic shields. They can go in and stop the shooter. They can go in. We have cowards here, ladies and gentlemen, of not going in and saving the kids. All right, we have kids dead and a active police officer, active police chief denying everything that's had going on, lying to people, and trying to save his own hide and not to put own, his own blame onto himself, that the reason why there's 19 people dead, and 19, 21 people dead, 19 kids dead, and two teachers. Let's see, I don't know, maybe this guy should probably be put in jail and not see the light of day ever fucking again. How about that? That might, that might be the great start. And... Not only does he go as far as this, he also says not a single responding officer ever ever hesitated, even for a moment, to put themselves at risk to save the children. Yeah, well, as we can see here, um, they didn't seem to do a very good, valiant job into saving the children at all. And instead of having to make another video for this, specifically, I'll just go to this here. Uval teacher told officer husband, I'm dying, he had a gun, taken away, and was detained from saving her. 
Amongst the worst stories out of the Uval shooting are the people who tried to help and were detained or prevented from doing so. One of them was a police officer, Ruben Ruiz. He was one of the armed and ar uh, armed and armor officers standing outside the classroom while his wife, Eva Morales, was a teacher inside the classroom. While the police outside the classroom were being told the situation was handled and that the shooter was communicating with officers, Ruiz got a phone call from his wife that the exact opposite was true. I, I, I just, when I saw the timeline, I knew it was a complete failure. Uh, and if you all would have just taken over in charge, you would have been able to save lives in this type of situation. And I ask, I think I even text you, whether or not DPS had authority by law to go in and assess a situation like this and take immediate action. When uh, lives are they don't, they don't have authority. No, sir, they don't have authority by law. And I can tell you that one of the biggest problems and I, that is reflected in the timeline, to your point, is the not only the lack of leadership, but also the misinformation that's being provided. What, was, what officers were being told is he's, the subject is contained, the chief is in the classroom or the office negotiating or talking to the subject. So you know, everyone is treating it, that therefore comes in afterwards. You're, you're in the hallway and you're looking at it and you're being told this. There's no reason to discount that. Now, certainly if you heard, well, wait a minute, we're getting 911 calls from children in the classroom. And we did note on the timeline, we got an officer, Officer Weiss, whose wife called him and said she was, in, she was been shot and she's dying. So certainly those things, and what happened to him was he tried to move forward into the hallway, his, he, was, he was detained and they took his gun away from him and escorted him off the scene. Oh my God. He, he, it, folks see this is the reason why i'm telling everybody this uh, to begin with uh, 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 is what i'm talking about here we cannot trust the fucking police to protect us and it's up to ourselves to protect us and our family instead they rather detain us and prevent us from going to saving our wife or our, fa or our children. That's what they're going to do. And we have this cowardly police chief, or a Dondo bitch, that decides to have a whole bunch of kids killed because he's irresponsible and he's a piece of our garbage and he should be put in jail. Now, we all know that some of the Republicans are to blame for this because they're trying to do an actual, uh, an actual, uh, gun control laws, which, by the way, we'll get to that story later on, but as it is right now, we don't have to worry about that because we have other issues that we have to face to try to solve and fix, so we don't have to worry about too much. But don't worry, the Republicans are coming because I swear to God, these people, I swear to God, these people are animals, they're, they're the worst people imaginable, all right? So, so, due to us knowing all these things, of this story, we have a police chief that's lying and trying to save his hide and not being responsible and has and caused the deaths of 19 children plus two people and then uh, plus two other adults that shouldn't have died and all kinds of horrible, inf horrible of, of coward police not doing their damn job. I think I'm safe to say that I'm pretty livid. And this should make you angry too. See you guys in the next video, guys. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll uh, see how we can combat this bullshittery.